Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 5 and today we're taking a look at the 2021 Lamborghini Countach LPI 800-4 so the 112 units of this were made and it is based on the Lamborghini Cyan um, which actually had um, less units than this in fact only 82 of those were made 19 of which were the Roadster version so this is actually not as rare as that car despite looking more like a one-off um, and since it is based on the Cyan, it has the same carbon fibre monocoque chassis, the same hybrid system and carbon ceramic brakes. But where this differs is in the look of the vehicle as it is made to emulate the look of the original Countach from the early 70s to 1990. And yeah, I think overall they've uh, nailed the design of the car. It's certainly got that angular look to it that the original car had. It's also nowhere near as fussy in terms of its design like the Cyan is, which I feel is a little bit over-designed. I do sort of like the look of it, but I just think it's, it looks like a car that they couldn't stop designing, basically. Let's add a little bit more here or there, whereas this does look more like a classic car in terms of you know, being a lot less fussy, you know, a lot cleaner lines, and yeah, I really think they've nailed the angular look that the original Countach had just with a modern tweak of having it slightly curved at the front there and I like the side profile as well with those massive air ducts which will feed all of the air that you could ever need into the engine I like the wheels and yeah I really rather like the rear end as well which again is a lot less fussy than the Cyan I like the uh, six uh, rear lights you got there, the quad exhaust and the fact it's got quite a short rear end as you can see not much of an overhang there, obviously the uh, bodywork is a little bit further out the, at the top but at the bottom with the wheels there you don't really have very much at all so uh, yeah that is again more of a classic kind of design on the go there and um, yeah you've uh, also got a full width well a near full width rear wing just like the Cyan did but again I think it looks a little bit better in terms of the way that it incorporates itself with the design of the car overall and yeah like I said you've got the same drivetrain, same uh, mi uh, mild hybrid system that you have on the Cyan so that means you have a 6.5 litre V12 engine coupled with a 48 volt electric motor which all in combines to make 808 horsepower and 556 pounds feet of torque which is yeah, a phenomenal amount of um, horsepower and torque uh, for a car that at the end of the day is naturally aspirated yes it has a hybrid system but that on the end of the day only provides an extra 34, 38 horsepower so even without that this would still be around 770 horsepower which is yeah a formidable amount like the Cyan though it has pretty much no practicality and uh, that's all you get in terms of a boot which I don't think you could fit really much in at all but then it again kind of emulates the original Countach which was not a practical car but that said you could probably see out the back of this a little bit better than you could with the Countach but like that car you still have the scissor doors and um, yeah but again, unlike that car, it's a lot. It's no doubt going to be a lot easier to drive on a day-to-day -day basis. The, con the bigger issue a lot of people had with the Countach originally was the fact that the, um, the steering, the clutch, uh, were really rather quite heavy. I think uh, Jeremy Clarks has said that it felt like the steering was in, uh, set in cement. Um, so yeah, this isn't going to be anywhere like that. It's you know looking like a Countach, but not going to be driving like one basically. And yeah, the interior is pretty nice as well. Got lots of carbon fiber. You've got your Countach name down there. You've got the one of 112 in the uh, center console there. So yeah, this is the first of the 112 that were built, which is pretty neat that they've actually been able to get a hold of that car with this uh, for this game. And as you can see, you've got carbon fiber side skirts, carbon fiber wing mirrors. But despite all of that, this is actually quite a heavy car. 4,116 pounds, which is obviously quite a lot in terms of weight but obviously has a lot of power and torque to make up for that so uh, yeah and obviously those carbon ceramic brakes will certainly help in terms of slowing this car down with all of the momentum that it's going to have but nonetheless let's get out into the open road and see what this car can do right so here we are at the drag strip so let's see what this car can do in terms of pure acceleration before we hit the speed camera and then we'll get it round the track. So uh, yeah, with all-wheel drive and that mild hybrid system, it's yeah got plenty of acceleration off the line, as you can see, revving to about eight and a half thousand RPM. And yeah, is no slouch whatsoever, despite all of that weight that it's got going on. 158 miles an hour is pretty damn good. 
Um, it's got also some mild rear steering on this as well, I feel. It seems to, yeah, you can see the rear wheels moving a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, this is, you know, related to the Scion, which also had that. Uh, but the Scion itself was also related to the Aventador, which again also had that kind of rear wheel steering. So, uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's kind of the uh, run of those kind of large Lamborghinis that started with the likes of the uh, Countach. That then moved on to the Diablo, and then you had the, uh, the Murcielago, and then you had the Aventador, and this is, yeah, kind of following on from all of those, basically, uh, while looking like the Countach in some regards. So, yeah, we're high-end S1 class. So let's see the uh, stats that this has got going on. So, all fairly good, to be honest, in terms of handling and braking. Launch and acceleration are really rather quite great, and the top speed is fairly solid as well. Not going to compare it to the stats of the Siam because, as usual with this game, the stats are a little bit iffy. Um, they never really, you know, are able to be compared to in a 100% convincing manner, to be honest. Have done on occasion, but that's when it's felt like the cars are, you know, similar enough to compare enough in terms of the stats. But with this one, it's not quite there. So, yeah. And at the end of the day, this apparently weighs more than the Cyan, but apparently it's quicker. So, uh, yeah, but nonetheless, let's hear what this car sounds like, and then we'll talk about it some more. So yeah, like with all the other Lamborghini naturally aspirated V12, this sounds absolutely glorious. Nice high revving as well, and uh, yeah, just absolutely encourages you to go as fast as possible, which means that you know you're gonna want the handling and the braking and the uh, general steering turning to feel as good as possible, and this really does. It's easily one of the better handling uh, like big Lamborghinis out there, to be honest. Especially when you consider, you know, the uh, rear spoiler isn't, you know, fixed. It only comes up at a certain rate of speed. And, yeah, you've not really got much in the way of aerodynamics in the rest of the car. And yet, despite that, it turns in really nicely, has minimal understeer. And, uh, yeah, the car rarely wants to oversteer as well. So, uh, yeah, overall, very successful in terms of the handling, despite all of the weight that this car has going on for it. And uh, yeah, acceleration is pretty damn spot on as well, 0 to 16, 2.5 seconds, 0 to 105.5 seconds, and it going to a top speed of 223 miles an hour. So apparently, in terms of this game, that is actually quicker than the Cyan, which obviously doesn't make much sense considering this weighs more. But I don't know, maybe the gearing is better, different, or slightly changed up. Um, I've not really driven the Cyan for a while now. It's just not been my uh, favourite of modern Lamborghinis to drive, but this definitely is. It's got the looks down to a T, handles really nicely, it's properly quick in a straight line, and uh, yeah, perfect fits the current series retro waves uh, old mantra of, you know, 80s style, basically, which is the whole retro wave thing. So um, yeah, that's what the part of the series that this car is a part of. I get it for 20 points. And yeah, it's well worth getting. It's easily, like I said, one of my favourite big uh, modern Lamborghinis. And uh, yeah, he's more than able to uh, hold up to the likes of previous big Lamborghinis like the Aventador and the Murcielago. So get out there and get this car if you haven't already. It doesn't take very long to get those 20 points and it is well worth getting as it is a fantastic car overall. Uh, but nonetheless, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.